Okay, I'm live again. Hello, everybody. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit late. Um, shit. <laughs> um, I was trying to use the OBS and I've updated it and thrown all the settings out. So, um, yeah, fun and games. Anyway, uh, been a busy week. Been working flat out on the layout, trying to get lot done on it um, trying to complete give, give it some sort of completion so um, that's what's going on I'm going to send out an invite to anyone in the group that wants to join in on the chats share what you guys have got so um, yeah uh, let's go on to that okay let me redo this okay uh, that's a little bit better okay right here we go So, where am I up to? Um, hey Ethan, how are ya? Welcome, welcome in, and um, going to wait for the rest of the other gang to wake up and join the stream. Um, I did try to use OBS, but... Um, with how uh, things have happened with the update, it uh, messed things up. So I've got to go through that and do some test runs during the week. So I'm going to show you what I have done and achieved this week. Um, my new town is getting closer and closer to completion. Um, hey, Gary, how are you? Hey, Melvin, how are you? Yeah. What do you mean you think you're awake? Were you ever, you were doing all that dancing and everything else last night and throwing buckets of water at me. Um, I think it's about time you're waking up. Man, we caught the wild, wicked storm yesterday here last night, or yesterday afternoon, and um, went up to about one o'clock in the morning. I managed to get some painting done, thank you very much, Gary. Um, so, before I go to the new section of the layout, I'll show you guys what I have done. Um, I'm doing, as you guys know, I'm doing a series at the moment uh, called Back to Basics which I'm doing, have the advantage of doing on my new section. So yesterday, between the rain and everything else, I managed to do a local patrol panel, distribution panel, that's going to be sitting by the station. Um, I still have some labels in it. Um, I will end up um, putting lights and switches on it but as i said that's going to be part of the show it right in this the paint dried just in time before uh gary sent me that rainstorm over here i do i did manage to get the big one done too yeah it's all right paybacks you'll get the no i don't want one this afternoon no thank you but then again i've done the painting i wanted to get done um, I just need to draw. I just need to try up, um, um, dry up some clay and dirt that I want to send over to Jason for his his model. Um, my football field across the road um, 
is a lake underneath the grass. I mean, I've got water. We've got waterfalls coming up off the curb. Um, just bear with me. I'll go and get the big panel. So here's the big panel, it's all painted up in black. It's going to be the same concept. Um, I'll take the tape and that off it. Let's manage to dry just in time um, as you can't quite see it now. But um, yeah, that's going to, I'll take the tape off that later on after the show. Um, I have printed out some signs for my town. Some are up. Um, I've done some of these signs for the new town. Hope you like the names that I've got on there. Yeah, there is a video coming out. Uh, should be out tomorrow to show the completion of the road, how it looks, how I put it together. So yeah. Making progress. Um, I'll take you over to the new section now so you can walk and have a look. Um, let me just swatch, switch the camera. There we go. As you see, um, Uh, it looks a lot different from last week. Yes, I've got more vehicles on it. I've got trains running on it. Um, I'll have the train running on it shortly. Um, I've even, um, what do you call it? I haven't got the signals up going in yet. I'm going to have to swap them around because I've got to work out how to hook these. Hey, Anthony, take two. How are you? You're welcome to join in on me if you want to have a chat. Um, let me just send an invite over. There you go. We've got the invite there. You can welcome to join in in the stream yard and have a bit of a chit chat with us. So, yeah, the road's pretty much finished. I'll go over there. Um, yeah, the sign's falling over, it's not been, it's not going to be its permanent place. The road's all done, right through. I'll put the station building in, as you can see the height compared to the engine. Um, and um, now I've just got to put the buildings into place and the lights, which will come in during the week. So it's all taking shape. Slowly. Yeah, so hey Melvin, how are we? Um Yeah, so I am gradually getting there. Um I did make a smaller signs for it, but um where I intend to put it, um where I tend to put the other sign here for this little dirt road. Just going to overhang too much over here and i don't like that so um i just got a sign here which you see in the video footage that's coming out tomorrow you know how it all looks um yes yeah, gradually getting together i just got to finalize my um i just got to finalize all my um wiring for it and um, do the panel, which is the most important thing. I really care that I really want to get done is the um, is the wiring. Most oh, not so much the wiring. The um, I want to get the panel finished. 
So, um, yeah. Um, still a bit of work to go, to go. I really want to get a lot of it done within the next um, three weeks, three and a half weeks, um, so I can sit back and enjoy doing offering the layout because after that I'm not going to be able to do any modelling construction for about two, three months. So that's the, that's the name of the game at the moment. Um, I will do one thing today. I did receive a parcel today. Since I'm such a special boy here in my area with Australia Post, my courier, my Australian Post guy, I get deliveries on Sunday. Not just Sunday, so there you go, Gary. I'll get deliveries on sa on Sundays here. Um, so we might as well open it up. Look, Sunday mail delivery. <laughs> um, I managed to get a. I'm doing a. I'm doing a Union Pacific train of all trains. Um, it's more of a more of a tourist train than a uh, an era train. I'm using a big boy that's sitting up at Omaha. I bought one of them. And I've got some carriages, but instead of using just having a modern diesel on it, um, is it ticking? No, the battery must be gone flat. Um, still using a model. I like my uh, E units, and um, I've got the A unit, and I managed to find a dummy B unit for it. So, um, yeah. Um, so it's going to make up a nice set as a tourist train, especially when we go out to the train shows, which we should go to next year, Gary, hopefully. Oh, come on. That's an insult. Come on. I'll come from the gong. We don't mess around in here at the gong. We do things properly. We don't take two hours to open up boxes. And we can still do chats and everything else. Um... Look, open. Now you've got newspaper and city paper, so I'm not interested to, not interested in reading that. So that can go to the recycle guide. Yeah, yeah. And the only part of this is um, when I get it from this guy. Gary, um, yeah, I do have to unwrap it, and he wraps them up good, so I'm still not going to take as long as he. Jeez, I was able to do that. Um, I'll go and get it. That um, platform. When um, he was doing that show the other day, um, Modelling Monday, I managed to do this platform during that show, put it, glued it together, painted it all up and put it into place. So that shows you how quick, quick I get thing, things done around here. Pattern is almost undone. Just, just bear with me. It's not going to be taking two hours. Um, you've just got to be careful. It is a... Now, this guy, I've got to give it to him. I mean, yes, sometimes things get damaged, but he does. He does pack up the um, models pretty well. Might help before you use a sharp knife, eh? But yeah, it, it, the, the set's going to look good. I've got managed to get, um, I managed to get the carriages for it. I do want to get some more 
carriages like the baggage cars and that for it um, which I will get shortly so I wonder where it's who if they can actually take get the clock out and see shut the so you can see how long it takes to hit the unwrap the package so it's not too bad on eBay on the auction I don't know how I managed it but I scored it for um, I think it was forty five dollars and it's a river I see one no, I'm not going to motorize it. Um, I'm just going to tell you these look all right. So that's going to go with A, with my A unit somewhere. So, yeah, that's my purchase for the week. Um, I haven't got really much anything else coming. Um, yeah, it is nice. Oh, I haven't really got anything else coming in the mail. I do have some uh, more wood kits buildings to come. Um, I've got a petrol station uh, for Americans. They're called gas station. You guys call them gas stations. It's an old style. Uh, we're getting a bakery. And I'm getting mails. How are we? And I'm also getting a... Gary or Creeper would know uh, Walker's Kits Big Pub. I'm going to get that one as well. And I'm going to turn that into a Hooters College. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know. The Hooters has just got into the stuck with things at the moment. It's going to be a replacement seat to where the caviar is going to be. So it's going to be quite interesting on what I'll... Um, what I must probably be able to achieve on it. It's going to be a busy little town. Um, for those who are not common with Australian, um, especially within my state, in the uh, regional areas, uh, many towns have up to about two, three, maybe four pubs uh, in their town. Um, everyone has their own hangout area. And my little scene is going to be no different. It's going to have two drinking holes, if not three. Um, and with a few houses in the background, I've got to get a backdrop made up for it. Um, now, most of the scene is going to be based on a place called um, Danny Do. Uh, it's a place just outside of Newcastle. It's a place where, with my driving, um, especially out west, it's a town where I always stop to have a break. It's a nice, cosy little town. It's got a little railway line going through it. Um, if some of you guys watch the end of some of my clips, there is one clip there with a painted silo with the railway line, which was done recently. Uh, I think I've done it in June when I came back from West Australia. Uh, that's Dunny Do. Brilliant, uh, brilliant little town. G'day, Ron. How are we? Uh, welcome to the show. Now, um, I am going to be using this time slot frequently now. Uh, thanks to Steve in you were not no state saying there's an empty slot about this time so I'm going to be doing this time slot on a regular basis uh, it'll actually work in pretty tie in pretty good once I get back to work because um, when I get back to work I won't be able to do nighttime streaming on Sunday so Doing a Sunday morning stream, morning lunchtime ish sort of thing, it'll work out ideal. So, um, yeah, from now on, I'm going to do the. I'm going to. I, I'm thinking I'm going to, on the theme of modern railroad gangs. So, uh, not gangs as in <laughs> fighting gang, but it has a working gang on the railway line or the railroad gang. So. 
That's what I was referring to, gangs. Um, so, yeah, we're getting a little progress on it. Um, I need to get the switching panel finished. Um, you can see that switching panel. I'll show it to you again. Um, especially Anthony. Yeah, I will set reminders. Um, I'm still trying to work it all up. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can come down after you've got permission. You can show me how to do that. <laughs> anyway, and there's my first switching panel as Anthony. As you know, I'm doing a series on getting back to basics. Just simple, basic wiring. No Edwinos, no JMRI, nothing like that. Just basic, simple, principle wiring. Okay, so I'm going to make it as easy as possible in plain, plain English. Um, so that's that one. Um, and then I've got the main panel here, Anthony, which is going to be working on the same system with the basic wiring. This one's going to be a little bit more advanced, but I will do a tutorial on this i haven't taken the tape off it i'll do that later i won't do it on show because i don't want to mess up i don't want to get the um um what you call it i don't want to get heat reputation but the thing is i want to get that take that tape off through the tutorial so i'm making a part of that so what else have i got um um this week i'm gonna get sorry let me get it away this week i'll get a couple more cameras set up um one that's going to be in my to my left here so i get a shot on the layout and uh, another camera up behind me which is going to be out to the right and um i'm going to use a panning camera to the side here so i can actually all up floating camera so that's going to come up in the next couple of weeks yeah yeah i really got myself in deep into this streaming um i'm into it now so yeah um i'm going to um yeah i'm going to um have a bit of enjoyment in doing it I'm waiting to. I've got to prepare myself for once I get off the right. Once I have my operation done, my right hand it's it's really getting bad now. Um, I'm going to have to look at what content to put on. I will still continue doing my live streaming. Um, so yeah, we'll wait and see. Well, what can I? What else did I get? Um, this week where did i put it here, here um i did go up to kishula hobbies i think a lot of you people have seen the video shot at um me giving you guys a shout out to kishula hobbies fantastic bloke gary can vouch for me on that one Till March next year. Oh, that's all right. You're not far from me, so you can come down here to help me build my layout. Now, that's all right. I'll give you gas money, the petrol money, to come down and give me a hand. That's simple. <laughs> Christ. Okay. This is how bad. This is how crazy things are here at the moment with our COVID restrictions. I can't go to creepy. The creek is only like 40 minutes, 50 minutes drive from my place, and I cannot go to it because it's class, it's regional. However, I can jump on a plane and go over to Toledo and give Anthony a visit. So, how nuts is that? That is getting, getting really beyond the joke. Um, and really, like, 
Gary's area, Creepy's area is actually pretty, they've got a high vaccination rate, so they should have included us into it. But yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, um, Gary. I know that you really want to get close to your family back down to Canberra again. Um, so, yeah, other thing I've got is, it's here somewhere, in my mess. Um, here. Back in the real room. I'll be back in a minute. Sorry about that, I'm back. Oh, mate, you guys talk me on my back all the time. I don't care. I've got thick, I've got thick, thick pink skin. Not soft pink skin like you guys have up there, Gary. I mean, pigs and sheep are up your way. The whole world has seen it. If you just wonder what I'm talking about, Go and watch a movie called Babe, the Talking Pig. That's actually made up where Creepy Gary lives. And the showground is only around the corner from me. So, um, so I've got a small enough. My water's, um, Cow pan was going to be too small, so I end up getting the life lock snap together one. Um, I can kit bash this with no problem, but now I've realised I'm going to need another kit because it only goes to unloading and laying up the trains, but it doesn't have a facility for the Aussie trucks. So I've got to get another one of these this week to put it where the cow pen is. And um, then I've got, uh, some of you would have seen, I had a problem with one of my <coughs> uh, SDS brake vans. So I'll take it up to um, Joseph Hewlett Hobbies and he swapped it out for me with no issues. So I've got two of these. I haven't tested it yet. Um... And while I was up there, I went out to Model Railroad of Craftsman, which is um, our NCE and DCC um, code provider here. And um, I ended up getting uh, a cord, which is 12 foot. I was trying to make one up, but for some reason I just could not get the get the work. So I've got one of them, and <laughs> uh, they had I got the last one AIU one for my block detectors. Only problem is uh, BD twenties hit did not in stock. So what I'm going to have to do is. Um, I'm going to have to pinch some off my layout here. I've got two that I don't really need to use, but they're easy to get to and easy to take off. And I'm going to put them in the new section so I can actually finish off the, um, I can finish off the ba back to basics for wiring. So I've got these. I've got another, sh I've got shipment of BD20s coming from the US which hopefully will be here 
uh, before my surgery so I can put them into place. Because once I get the surgery, this hand's like, it's <clears throat> going to be like this. I'm going to be one unbanded. So that's what's happened this week. Um, just pretty much cleaned everything up. I really do want to get the wiring done so I can, the stuff that's behind me, um, all the stuff that's behind me here, and the stuff on the right of my table, I can actually slide on these and lay out and gives me more room. Um, so that's our whole initial plan. I have got rough ideas what I want to do on an expansion, but I'm not going to be able to do it till at least... Um, um or uh, Easter until I can actually start to do some well, late March, Easter, East time, April when I can start doing some serious work with this hand. So um well well yeah you're gonna go to retirement but you know what I've I've been sitting here at home Echo eight injuries. I've been sitting here at home for the last since first of May last year um, because of my my wreck. And okay, I've been living what I can do, but I will tell you what, I'm getting bored. Um, bored being at home. I need to get out. Um, I can't be cooped up in a. I can't be cooped up in an office. Can't be cooped up in a, inside a building for too long. I've got to get out and about. So, um, who knows, uh, Anthony Dodge, I might come knocking on your door next May because I'm definitely going to US in May next year. Um, I'm looking at about two, three weeks there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I might pop in and see because I won't be that far from you. I'm going around seeing family, friends and whatnot and um, just got to get a change of scenery. Uh, well, I won't be able to go and see Gary because he, they don't want us up there. We don't want them down here too, but they just keep throwing buckets of water and these throwing their drums and crackling cymbals and everything else down here. Uh, um, okay, I might fire my layout out and so you guys can see when just um gonna be a bit of noise. I just shut down my um steam engines. I can't wait to um have the turntable isolated or the tracks isolated on it. When I switch the main power on, I'm not gonna hear all the trains running. So um, I'm going to switch cameras and you can actually see the new train runner or the train running on the new section. There she goes. So I've got it up in the new section. Make sure my switch is set right. Yep. Um, so yeah. Let's give it a go and see how far it is before it stops. Now the pricing of the tracks are being cleaned up. And this is where the other camera came in handy. About where the train is sitting now, it's not where she is. Where she's sitting now, I'm going to put a signal box there. It's going to have a camera in and it's going to face down the track to where the train just came from. And another camera facing down to the yard. And so I'll let her disappear out in the sunset. A dirty bit of track up here, so just bear with me for a sec. I didn't clean all the track up, did I? Um, I 
The Crown will be back in a moment. Yeah, the cap's dirty. Nothing worse than having to do with crack. You know, the crack's done nothing. Yeah, this Alco is a nice one. Um, what I'm going to do is um, <coughs> what I'm going to do with one of them, I'm actually going to repaint it. So um, I'm going to paint it into uh, BHP colours. That's the one I want. Hey, okay, thanks for coming back, guys. This is why I need my panel. Now, this one, this is a Bartman engine, and it has the um, the soundtrack sticker and only decoder on it doesn't really doesn't really have um, doesn't really have the right sound for an alco well not to what I like I'm not that happy with the sound on it um, I do want to um, It almost sounds like I don't know Gary will know the creepy will know about the um the old BHP engines that we had here. They were the English diesel electrics. And this engine sounds almost like it. So um I might actually change the decoder, take the decoder out of this. And put it in to another engine that I've got here. Yeah, let me, so here we go in the cattle siding. I definitely need another camera. I did actually need a camera that can zoom. So which ones did you work on, Gary? Did you work on the Alcos or did you work on the ones at BHP here? I'm interested to know about that. Because if you worked on the ones down here that still works, then you probably know you probably know my dad. You'll you you'll you know my old man and a couple of other people who look you know. Oh you did work. So you'd know my old man. He worked on the brain hoist crane um they called him mick yeah you, you know him and there was um so which did you work in a diesel shop by any chance um let me just go to the camera yeah D did you work in a diesel shop uh, you would have known a uh, guy by the name of Alex um, Mezzedi or Mercedes or whatever he called him. Mezzedi, his name was, a Hungarian guy uh, named Alex. And there was a guy that was a train driver that ended up becoming a cleaner. His name was uh, John Polinkus. So you probably know all those people. Um, yeah, I'll pop you there every now and then. 
If you weren't there, if you weren't in there when the brain was brain was going, you definitely. Oh, okay. Well, you, well, if you were in a tour room, you probably knew um, Alex. You would have known Alex there. He was down there for a lot of time. He was the one that redesigned. One of his, one of the things that he redesigned on the old Beezus was exhaust stack. Um, he actually made a cover for him to stop the water and whatnot coming in through the exhaust stack. 1974, well, 1970, 74, my dad was um, working on Crane 30 and 21 at the time. And um, then he went to Alex Mazzari. He was working in the diesel shop there. John Palinkas, he was still a crane driver, but when he got hurt, they sent him into light duty to clean up the engines. Now, I'll show the other alcove I want to do up. Um, Now, I want this is <laughs> something we're going to cry on this. Uh, I'm going to do this one up to wait out time to kit bash it properly, look proper properly. But I'm going to kit bash this into the old orange, orange um, color scheme with a black zebra striping on the front. Um, I think I might be able to put buffers on it to have we've got the ones of the buffers we had here. So I'm going to do this one up as a BHP engine. So it's going to, I think it's going to come up good. They're almost the same, they're almost the, they're almost the right style. I mean, yeah, you do need to modify them a little bit, but they're pretty close. They're pretty, pretty close. The cab needs to be changed around to be more precise for what we have in the storeworks here. This is going to work nicely on my layout. Um, because at the moment it's not really designed for, uh, with that small section that I made, it's not really designed for big engines. Here's no, I love these outcasts. They're real nice pocket size engine basically. And um, I've got this one. This one I won't repaint and leave that as, as as it is. This one's basically going to, uh, with the American trains that I, well, the area that are modeled in America is down Spartanburg. So we had Southern, we had CSX, uh, Princefield, uh, Pontiac, um, Seaboard. Uh, what is it, L&N, and, and I believe it laid the coastline went in there too. Spartanburg was the second biggest, um, Spartanburg station was the second busiest railroad hub in the United States after, after Chicago. Yeah, those, I like these little ones, they, they, they go anywhere. Uh, yes, I like my big ones, but I prefer the little ones. I've got my um, little semi classes. <coughs> I've got my, I'm going to get them too. Out of, all, out of all the little switching ins we, we have here in, at here in this region, I would say I'm not that little but yeah, I haven't run this for a while, this is my little yard engine. Um, I'm 
the little semi class these but actually i'm going to leave it in a box so we'll take it out a little bit um, these these were my favorite engines in particular um this this really takes me back to my childhood days as far as i can remember my dad used to take me down um down at Port Kembla when they had had all the walls and that Gary or, or Creeper will know when they had the um number five four jetties we had the southern copper we used to have the trains going in and out the um uh the cotton plant and going down the rail yard we had the engines gone switching um dad used to take me down there and down to the coco and see where the new bridge is now there used to be a railway crossing and i'm gonna pull that up this is my little favorite yeah we used to watch these go around and i love these little engines you notice the grill is coming up we're gonna have to glue, glue that on so this is my little favorite one goes anywhere fits anywhere um so this is going to be one of the workhorses i've got another two three more of these coming um so yeah these are all your favorites um there was only i think what uh correct me if i'm wrong but there were only 10 of these 70 plus 10 or 11 of these made all up and they're actually quite they were actually designed and worked down in this region. So it looks like we have to get a bit of super glue and glue that on, yep. Um, that's a to-do, that's a way to do this. Yeah, I've got more, yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I do have pride in what I've got. Another project that I do have, um, I'm going to put all these projects and hold until we get the layout done because it just takes so much time but if i get sick of it i can go and do something else one of my old the other things i've got to do now is this is an old barkman engine is barkman? yeah barkman now i like the cab style on it they were unique uh for that region i haven't seen any in this color scheme yet Seaboard had them, but I know they went in the CH6. The mech doesn't work. I don't care about the mech. So I'm going to take it all out and I'm going to swap it over for um, uh, one of the new Atlas ones. So you remember all that when we had all the semi classes and all those little switching engines and that. It does take us, does go back a long time ago. Um, I think one thing I might do is now that we've got our restrictions and we don't have the COVID police down, I'd really like to go down, um, down in number six journey, just take a recording of what's left. I did have some photos of that, uh, but I lost them all. Um, they show what's left and see what's on the still original part of it. Um, try to get some shots before they do some more earthworks down there because they're going to do the new container terminal down there. Uh, there's nothing left at the old, the old coal road and that's all gone now. Uh, they're going to use that as a, um, uh, where they're going to have hydrogen gas, where they're going to transfer the hydrogen gas and whatnot and they'll do the facility down there. There are still some tracks down there where I need to go down and record it, film it, um, share it amongst you guys because, hey Mystic, once they start um, excavating down there and start doing their construction, that's, um, it's all going to be lost forever. So some of us can still get some, some recordings of it, it would be great. Um, I believe there's still some of the original line that leads into 
number six jetty is still there. The tracks on the wharf is still was were still there. Uh, one thing about number six jetty, it was a huge, huge mess. The uh, maze of track, not mess, it was a maze. Um, uh, actually, you would have known about this train accident, creepy. You remember when, uh, before she got paid, it went 70, 7006, and one of the BHP engines ended up having a bit of a um, lover's tiff down near number six G, where, um, I think it was. Actually, uh, um, 706 was the one that came out second best out of it. And, yeah, the whole front chassis was all bent and twisted and ripped it off, and uh, the BHP engine was still good as gold, um, except for a little bit of cosmetic damage. But um, between a little lover's tip between the two, this one came out second best. All the front of it, there is pictures of all the front of that was all, Damage and smashed in, and it's amazing she's still around. Um, this actual engine is sitting up at the New Year's that come over to Australia, go up and film me a railway museum. This engine is still up there, and they still use it for switching around um, up at the museum. So I'm glad there's still one existence. I think there might be two, but I know one definitely still still an operational. Rest of them got cut up and cut up for scrap. Um, so yeah, that's um, there's a lot of history still around Australia, there's a lot of it go gone and going, sadly. Um, we where we had that train drama down here with um, some uh, what's a polite word I can use on. YouTube, um, where these idiots decide they're going to go near the railway crossing up the back of the go kart track to pinch, uh, pinch some go karts to avoid security cameras. <laughs> uh, there used to be a siding there, or switch there, that used to take us into a place called Tube Makers. That's all gone. The track's still there, but the switch is gone. The track work goes up to this. Facility where they used to make um, high pressure piping or piping for our water, uh, mainly gas and fuel pipes. Um, the track leads up into it. Um, how long it's going to be there for, who knows, but I ain't going to document that as well. Um, some of the track and tube makers itself has been dug up. Uh, I don't know, it's a stupidity or they could have, because what Tube Makers is now, it's a, a transfer point for all imported cars and you would think that they would have designed some or brought back some uh, car auto car racks, not what we had in the past. Um, creepy, he will remember the ones that we used to have here when they bought the Holdens and the Force for Melbourne. They used to have them on trains. They could have used the same facility to transfer um, cars between the wharf and here. Or take them up to Sydney or wherever else they Let's go and check something out. I'll have a point with my wife for just a minute.
Um, I'm back. Hey, Roy. Um, no, I didn't hear about that accident. Um, Thursday. Where was I? Thursday. I was rubbernecking down down at our tra uh, accident site down here. Um, the big 750 tonne, I know they were screaming trying to get her out of the way because there was something going on, but I actually got, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I came across an engineer that me and him didn't, mm -hmm. they came to loggerheads many years ago and um, he's still even been fired. He's been transferred to, to this department and, he was doing something I didn't like and um, I mentioned to his boss and yeah I was quietly, quietly asking you know for me to leave so yeah um, yeah it went all quiet for a while <coughs> but um, no I haven't heard about the one up at um, the, what the Pacific National done um, I'll have to have a look into that but it um, yeah, they were scrambling to get the big um, the big crane that was down here. They were scrambling to get it, it out of the way, and they bought uh, two little cranes and placed it on the swamp swamp ground, swampy ground, and lift up the one that turned over. So um, I haven't been back there to have a look to see if there's a bigger mess down there or not. So yeah. The one that happened down around corner, it was, I mean, it's less than five minutes, five minutes from me, 20 minutes walking. So it's not that far. And I suppose the, the good thing about it was there was no, no one killed. Um, there was a train strike on. If there was supposed to have been an official train strike, um, However, they did allow some of the workers during the peak hour to go to work, like the builders, um, but the daylight services, they were all pretty much cancelled. Um, because that train usually is packed with uh, builders and workers. They were actually told them that day before not to go to work today or on that particular day. So that train would have been packed with construction workers going to send you to work. So... He, they are so lucky it wasn't up the tail. Like, that's how bad that one that, that one was. Everyone is just shaking their heads and it's like a oh, very lucky. So anyway, this week I'm going to try to get this cattle pin put together. Um, the wiring. Um, I think I'll just finish doing the do the wiring on that section behind me, which hasn't got much to do on it now. Um, and I'll get the cattle pen up and going. And that's pretty much finished, apart from the buildings. Um, so that section behind me, you can say it's 80% done. Um, I really want to get that switching panel done and get the turntable or the roundhouse it's functioning, but I want to function where I can isolate all the tracks. So when I turn the master switch on, you down here, 100 engines going, and this, I've got sand decoders and a lot more stuff. I don't want 100 of them going off at the same time. To get them quiet, you've got to go down and shut them all down individually. So what I intend to do is um, just have the... Um, have it all uh, isolated. Uh, I'll see how I go with Tom. I'll see how I go with Tom. Otherwise, it's just going to have to sit there and wait and for another three months. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know what you guys think of it, but, yeah, these are the signs that have come up for my roads out of my new little town. Now, some of these towns do exist, <laughs> and some of them don't. <laughs> so you guys can guess which ones exist and which ones don't. Um, I think there was only, um, yeah, there's only two. 
two places I I still have not found on the map. So anywhere in the world, but the rest of them are. Um, now, how long is down the coast and come by chance is inland, not far from um, actually, no, it is a bit of a fair way. I mean, come by chance is actually a little little farming community out back of uh, Dunny Do. One name for a town, Dunny Do. Uh, it's a nice place if you. If you ever want to go for a bit of a train trip or a bit of a tour to drive out, you have to go to Dunny Do. And I'll tell you what, um, you need to go and check out the, the, the pastry shops there, the pie shops and that. They are, and what's the word? They're having a friendly war between each other to see who makes the best pies and pastry. And I tell you what, I hate to be the judge of that place because they all taste good. Um, every time I go into that place, it's like I'll go to, I'll take turns at each one of them. And um, yeah, when the time does get a bit cold, but now uh, being grain season, start the grain season. It's a hype of activity up there at the moment. Um, there's a lot of grain trucks going in and out. Um, so there will be grain trains up there. I can't get there at the moment. It's too far for me to drive. Um, wish I could get up there. Um, maybe if I throw in a gas money to um, creepy and hotel money, or we probably could go out there for a bit of a drive. What do you say, Gary? get us away from this east coast crap yeah it'd be a nice little drive up there there's two pubs we can stay at there's the royal that's on the corner and there's the other one a bit down the road so and they're both pretty good pubs i think i think they actually got four pubs in daddy do um we do have a town south from here um Gundagai which is roughly was actually officially the halfway point between uh sydney and melbourne before the freeway came in um it that little down there ended up having seven pubs in that place and they've gone down to i think last time i was down there at the 792 were open and even that even then, one of them were looking at closing down, so and that was way before COVID yet. Uh, since the bypass came in, there's not really that many people coming in. They are trying to save a lot, a lot of the railway bridges and the old road and the old wooden crescent bridge that goes across the main Murrumbidgee River. Um, but the white end's gotten to a fair bit of it, and it's going to cost them too much to replace it. They were talking about replacing the, fixing up the bridge so they can actually have um, some of the old trains go over the bridge and up towards um, Analog or up towards Turbot. But uh, thanks to certain civil engineers and planners and whatnot out of the, out of the city came down there and didn't design the overpasses over the old railway line so they really put a they really throwing the spanner in the works and getting that line up and up operational i think one of the bhp there is a bhp unit that the guy up there has bought uh, specifically to uh run up in the gun area so it's all gone quiet, so we don't know what's going on up there. I need to go for a drive down there. I'll go for a trip. So anyway, um, so this is uh, so this is going to be my last stream now. I'm going to have a lot more to do next week. Um, I'll show you a bit more about the on the town. Um, 
I'm going to later on today, as long as my neighbour doesn't throw more buckets of water my way, I'll be able to pay, pay up and prep the interior walls for my pub and my shops and um, get them up and going. Excuse <coughs> probably able to get them. Um, I should be able to get them up in the next few weeks. I've got it. We've got pretty much everything in it. I've just got to scratch building interiors. I like having interiors in my buildings, and um, just give it a bit of extra detail. And now that we're using cameras these days, it's surprising how much how much detail the cameras actually shown on your layout, especially these new high definition digital cameras and that. You can take the shots of the scene, and then when you take the shot off the scene, you can say, "Oh, geez, that needs to be fixed up there," or "I can see into there. I better touch that up." And um, I'm sort of like a perfectionist, but I'm not. But I just want to have things look right. And um, having a camera taking shots of it and looking at it, it's you can see what can be done, how you can actually improve it. I just like the fine detail stuff. One of the old modelers, he got me into it. So um, he got me into doing, I'll show it once I get it out. In one of my carriages, actually, he showed me, got me into making little toilet seats and whatnot and toilet bowls. They used to go in the old FO, in the old passenger carriages, end up putting that in it. And they just carved out of plastic. Um, but in the buildings, I'm putting detail in, like tables, benches, cupboards, walls. Um, yeah, so I don't think I'm going to go that far this time, but I will put some detail in it. But I'm going to make it so I can actually pull the buildings apart and add extra detail inside it. So with this wooden kit, I've got to work out how to do that. Uh, plastic kits are easy, um, but these laser wooden kits are a different kettle of fish, so um, it's going to be interesting how I get how that's going to come about. So anyway, people, I'm going to call it quits on this live stream. Uh, I will have this show now regularly on this time, starting at 11 o'clock Australian business daylight saving time, not the Queensland time. Uh, you can basically say Sydney time, uh, which is uh, 7 o'clock at night in in the US on the Eastern Daylight Saving Time. I mean, I know that's going to change in another week or so when your Daylight Saving finishes. So I'm going to adjust the time again for everybody, but still it's going to be within the path. Uh, Uh, yeah, I did start seeing it. I will finish uh, looking at the rest of it. I've got so many of the other people's videos to catch up on, but I will have a look at the paddle steamer. Um, I will actually put it on now. There's I'm doing some work here, so I was just trying to. I really been trying to concentrate in getting the back scene done and finished, so it actually looks like a layer the way I want it to. Um, have it appealing to the eye, so to speak, you know. So, um, now that's the closing, it's slowly coming to the end. I will be catching up on so much of you guys' videos, so many I haven't seen yet. Um, I will promise to look at them all. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I want to have a look at it. Um, creepy. Hopefully, we'll be able to get together in the next couple of weeks, uh, depending on what they do with our restrictions here. Because I really do need to get up to all aboard my railway shop because I do need some more staunchers. If not, that's going to come to a halt again. Um, but yeah, I thank everybody for coming on and watching the stream. Um, anyone that comes in to have a look afterwards, yeah, subscribe, hit that red bell button so you get all the notifications of my 
videos that get put up. Um, there is going to be Sidetrack Sunday this week. I'll just remind everybody, Sidetrack Sunday will be on Rick Decree's channel this week. Uh, this Sunday, he's going to he's be going to be hosting it, and Ray Bobo is going to do the fifth week, so the fifth, uh, fifth Sunday, which is the last Sunday of the month. So watch their stream; it's, it's going to be quite good. They've got something up uh, up their sleeve. Um, they got yeah. Everybody else is support each other, look after each other, stay safe, and be happy. And I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for joining.